Today we're looking at the attack on Fort Sumner. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. Also, I'd love to see your answer to question number five in the comments below. So after years of compromise and quarreling, the Civil War finally begins in April of 1861 at a fort in Charleston, South Carolina. So let's see how this all came together. With the election of Abraham Lincoln in 1860, southern states began to secede or leave the Union. Remember, not one southern state voted for Lincoln in the election, and many viewed Lincoln as being an abolitionist that would possibly try to eliminate slavery, which was the cornerstone of the southern economy. So, on December 20th, 1860, South Carolina is the first state to secede from the Union. And in February 1861, six southern states meet in Montgomery, Alabama to form their own country. They form the Confederate States of America. And they actually elect a president. U.S. Senator Jefferson Davis is selected to be their president. All of this before Lincoln is even inaugurated in March of 1861. So think about that. Lincoln comes into office his first day on the job. He's got to deal with this huge issue. So kind of another reason why I think Lincoln is our greatest president. The big issue was the federal government had properties or military facilities forts in the South. With the secession of Confederate states, the Confederates were demanding that these facilities be handed over to the Confederacy. Lincoln is arguing and saying, no, this is federal property. I want to preserve the Union, and we are not going to abandon these forts and you know military facilities. And so the fort at the forefront in all of this was Fort Sumner, located in Charleston Harbor, South Carolina, named after Revolutionary War General uh, Thomas Sumner and built close to the war, or shortly after the War of 1812. But by April of 1860, there's about 80 Union troops under the command of Major uh, Robert Anderson inside Fort Sumner. And they're surrounded by about 500 Confederates under the command of P.G.T. Beauregard, or Pierre Gustant Toutant Beauregard, big name there. Beauregard was actually, interestingly, a student of Robert Anderson at West Point, and Beauregard is, of course, demanding that they abandon the fort. And this is where we really see what a good politician Abraham Lincoln was. He did not want to be the one to fire the first shot because he did not want to be viewed as the aggressor because he felt like if he was viewed as the aggressor in this, that some of the border states were, might go with the Confederacy. Also, he was concerned that there might be some foreign support for the Confederacy if he fired the first shot. So he wanted to make sure the Confederates fired first. So he set up a scenario that really forces the Confederates' hand, I guess you would say. Um, Fort Sumner was running low on supplies. And so on April 8th, of 1861, Lincoln wrote a letter to the governor of South Carolina informing him that he would be sending a ship to resupply Fort Sumner. And really, this now forces the Confederates to make a decision. They can either allow the boat to resupply the fort, basically acknowledging that the Union has the right to keep that fort, or they have to fire on it starting the war. And so now he's forced the Confederates into basically having to fire first if they're going to do this. So the Confederates issued an order saying that they were going to commence the attack on Fort Sumner on Wednesday, April 12th at 4.30 in the morning. So interestingly, the night before, Beauregard actually rows out in a boat and meets with Major Anderson. And Beauregard begs Anderson to leave the fort before the attack begins. Anderson says he can't do that until he is given orders to leave the fort. So at 4.30 a.m. April 12, 1865, Confederate artillery bat batteries surrounding the fort open fire. The people of Charleston all come up on their rooftops and watch the bombardment of the fort um, as, it, as it's taking place. Troops inside the fort try to fire back, but again, they're just so outgunned that they really can't make much of a difference in firing back at the Confederate position. So at 2.30 p.m. on April 13th, after 34 hours of bombardment, the Union troops inside raised a white flag and surrendered Fort Sumter to the Confederates. So in the battle, no one was actually killed or wounded. There's only one Confederate horse that is killed in the fighting. And so it's rather ironic since this is going to be the beginning of the bloodiest war in American history. But it is kind of interesting to note, though, um, as the Union troops are leaving or evacuating the fort, they're allowed to fire their guns one last time in salute of their flag. So on April 14th, they fire their guns. One of the guns misfires, 
killing a soldier and wounding another. So there were actually some people who ended up getting killed as a result of the fighting there at Fort Sumner. This would not be the last time there would be fighting at Fort Sumner. Um, it would be really become a very symbolic target for the Union. And throughout the war, it was bombed or bombarded several times by Navy ships until it really it's just a pile of rubble by the end of the war um, when Union General William Tecumseh Sherman finally recaptures it in, uh, in uh, 1865. But with the attack, uh, the, with the, this attack, the Civil War had officially begun, and Lincoln immediately calls for 75,000 troops or volunteers to put down the rebellion. A few days after the, the attack, Virginia actually secedes from the Union um, on April 17th of 1861, and more would follow, but those border states of Missouri, Delaware, Kentucky, and Maryland do end up staying with the Union. All right, so hopefully you learned something there, and thanks for watching.